Thanks for joining us at Right on Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the 1976 Ford Grand Torino. It's a 125 scale kit from Ravel, model number 85-4412. It was previous, previously released in October uh, of 2015, the first time as a TV car from the Starsky and Hutch series. Ravel rates this a skill level 4 for intermediate builders and you'll get 93 parts molded in white, chrome, clear and clear red including some vinyl tires and metal pins. The motor builds up into a nicely detailed 21 piece unit that only needs some aftermarket wiring to really stand out. The chassis is somewhat basic but detailed and has a separate suspension for both front and rear. The tires have no branding but they do have white wall stripes and the interior is a multi-part unit where the details are very crisp. Most of the dash details are done with decals and the body is a one-part unit with a separate hood. I didn't find very many mold lines to speak of. It's very well done and the final assembly is tight and the car has a good solid feel to it. The instructions are the typical book format that Ravel is known for and paint callouts and decal placement is clearly noted. The decals are crisp and they include body markings. When you're done, it's about eight and a half inches long, three inches wide, and two and a quarter inches tall. Here are the contents of this kit, and some people would call this an open box review. And I opened the box and just took all the parts out for you to see in about 10 seconds. And as you can see, um, the, the registry on the decals is pretty good and they're very colorful. And we'll be using Model Master liquid cement for most construction but things like suspension uh, is where we use some super glue and some white glue for the uh, window glass. Also remember to use and heed all of the manufacturers safety suggestions when using any of the products here for your own protection. Assembly starts with the motor so assemble the block, heads, intake, oil pan and transmission pan and paint the motor Ford blue and the transmission aluminum color. The starter is black, the oil filter is white and decal 22 is added to that. Then install that to the block and paint the carbs copper and install them and the air filter to the intake. Now add the valve covers and breather caps to the heads. Paint the manifolds steel and install them on the heads and paint the water pump aluminum and put that in place. The belt is flat black with an aluminum alternator and paint the power steering unit and fan black uh, semi-gloss and add the power steering unit to the belt and install the belt and the fan onto the front of the motor. Now we can start on the chassis and assemble and paint the radiator flat black and note in the photo here the copyright script near the rear suspension valley uh, needs to be scraped off and sanded smooth uh, for a good finished look. Now paint the chassis flat black with semi-gloss black frame rails and a steel gas tank. The radiator hose is flat black and insert the motor into place. Now add the radiator and install the radiator hose in place too. Gather up these suspension and exhaust parts and paint the exhaust steel with aluminum mufflers. The drive shaft is steel colored and the rear suspension is assembled and then painted black and the front suspension is black with a steel tie rod. Now the shocks can be any color really depending on brand. I painted mine red. Now install the exhaust into place and add the front suspension to the uh, front pins and then add the rear suspension and drive shaft to the rear pins and attach to the transmission simultaneously then install the shocks. Get these parts out to assemble the wheels and note that the tires have white walls on the outsides so match the rim fronts and rears accordingly and to give the tires a street look press and roll the tread on a sheet of 220 sandpaper on a flat surface and then paint the rim backs flat black install the metal pins into the rim backs and the backs into the proper tires and then add the front rims. We can install the tires into their proper locations and just use a dab of super glue on the metal pin to hold the tires on. Put them into place on the suspension. 
at this point you'll now have what we'll call a rolling chassis upon which to complete the rest of the build and you can set this aside to move to the interior construction. Gather up the parts for the dash and the pedals and then install the pedals on the dash there and on the column install the steering wheel. The dash and the column are red and the shift stalks on the column are silver. Now the pedal shafts are steel then add decals 1, 2, 3, 8, 9, 10 and 11 to the dash and then add the column and the wheel to the dashboard. Grab these parts to assemble the front seat and the seat back and then paint the interior parts red. The trim is silver on the door panels and consult the internet for specific color choices if you change your build for a different uh, color scheme. I decided to add carpeting to my Gran Torino so I went and got some of that carpet flocking that you can buy from craft store or online and it's really easy to use just you make sure that your interior color is about the same color and then you use a, a slightly darker or similar color for the flocking and you just paint that area uh, where the carpeting would be uh, with some white glue and then you sprinkle a little of the flocking on there and then tamp it down a little bit turn it over and knock off anything that's loose and there you have it a carpeted interior. After you've added the carpeting we can install the front seat and the door panels then add the dashboard into place on the insets on the side panels and then set the interior aside with the chassis for now. Locate all the pieces that will be body color find the body, the mirrors, uh, the render corners and the hood and wet sand the body with a thousand grit sand paper uh, wet or dry to remove any blemishes including the slight mold lines and imperfections that you might find. After you've rinsed and dried the body you can prime it by putting some light coats on the inside and outside of the body parts and then some heavier coats to give it a good color depth uh, and primer coat. Install the front uh, bumper support corners and the mirrors into place prior to your color codes. Using the color codes for the car for that model year that you can find online, uh, I used um, a Ford Flame red color for uh, to paint my Torino and once you've got that uh, into paint you just do it the same way as primer. A few light coats to get it tacky uh, inside and out and then heavier coats for good color depth now set that aside to dry. Back at the bicentennial cars still sported a lot of chrome trim. So I use what's called a metal foil here uh, to give the uh, trim uh, a metal appearance. It's just like tape. You cut strips off about the same shape as your trim. You uh, stick it on and tamp it down and then you trim off the excess with a real sharp uh, brand new hobby knife and it looks just like chrome trim. Next we can add the decals to the body. Um, you'll want to use plenty of warm water both for removing them from the backing and on the body itself to help position them into place. And then I strongly suggest you use some of the decal setting solutions available on the aftermarket. Once you get all your decals into place let that cure overnight and then apply a clear coat for your shine. Locate the glass from the uh, kit and I wanted to give it a thinner crisper look so I dipped it into a, a vat of um, clear uh, pledge floor care. Um, this stuff's like magic. Uh, once you, um, you take it out of the uh, magic um, solution you let it wick off and then let it dry nice and clear and it actually uh, makes most scratches disappear and makes it look thinner and crisper. So go ahead and do that if you choose to for a nice look. Use some white glue to put a bead around the window openings and then uh, drop your windows into place. Once they're uh, all into place uh, you can add the rear view mirror and, uh, to the front windshield and also paint the visor's uh, interior color uh, when that starts to dry. Now get these parts out and paint the heating, heating unit black and the master cylinder steel with a gold top. Then install both of these items onto the firewall. 
Once the windows have dried, you can turn the body over and slide the interior into place, lining it up onto the pins in the rear. You won't need glue because the chassis will trap it into place. Now you can snap the chassis into place by spreading the sides a little bit uh, and then wiggling the chassis down inside. Make sure that the wheel wells uh, don't scrape the paint off of the uh, fenders there. And then just wiggle it into place and drop it in. It should stay there without glue. Now we can finish the front end with these parts and some of the underhood things. So add the mirror faces and then paint the uh, grill with a 50-50 mix of uh, flat black and thinner and then add the badge decal and install the grill. Now attach the headlights with some white glue and install the headlight units into the body and paint the bumper guards flat black and install the bumper adding the license tag. Under the hood paint the air cleaner unit uh, blue like the engine uh, with a black wing nut or steel and also the black end towards the fender well. Gather up these parts to finish the rear assembly and insert the center trim into the rear trim and add the tail lights. The tail lights have a white center painted in for the backup light and then install the unit into the body, paint the bumper pads flat black and add the license tag and install the bumper. I wanted to personalize my car so I printed out my logo on a license plate looking uh, image and onto some white paper, plain paper with a color inkjet printer and then uh, sized it up of course so uh, I could cover it with some clear cellophane tape and glue it onto the license tag uh, with some white glue. With the construction completed you'll find you still have just a few pieces left over in the kit. I suppose these are just extra goodies for your parts box. Well, there you have it. The parts count has been kept low for this kit, so this is a weekend builder. It shouldn't take too long to put a really nice looking display on your shelf. Now, there's 93 parts, uh, so that makes this uh, a quick build, and the motor is nicely detailed, and it looks good. And it's about a quarter of the pounds parts count all by itself. The details are crisp and clean for the kit. Assembly is tight and the parting lines are pretty hidden uh, on the engine even uh, with the oil pans covering them. The wiring is one place where you make this uh, kit really stand out. The chassis is basic but it looks good and uh, it would have been nice to have some more fuel or brake lines uh, but um, the detailer can add those. The interior is nice and crisply detailed, and the dash decals uh, make detailing pretty stress-free. The original car interior was pretty sparse, uh, so this represents it well, actually. The body has the correct look and design and shape. And one place where Ravel could have made added this was the engine bay. Um, it was molded into the body and not a separate unit. So the details are of the battery and that are molded in. And it um, has tires that look good with no names, no side moldings and non-branded, uh, but it does have white walls. In the grand scheme, this is just what we wanted for a nice quick build and a nice looking mold, molded Gran Torino. Uh, and if I were you, I'd buy one and put it on my shelf. We hope you like this premium step-by-step -step model kit review from Ride On Replicas. And so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. But you can find us on Facebook and at our website, rightonreplicas.com. Thanks!